coming to you from Apavia, Romania, in midst of the pandemic in our village, we have zero virus, clean air, and uh, good food. We are richly blessed, although it was quite a job getting here. Uh, we were delayed several months, but here we are. I have an encouraging message, I hope, to share with you. I read from Habakkuk some of the great passages in this rather small book are powerful, encouraging, and informative and instructive. Chapter 2, he says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. I see here a man who has decided to, to wait on God, to wait in his presence. He calls it his watch. And although many of us would be seated, he would stand upon his watch. And uh, probably his place is in a tower, I don't know, but he says, and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. Now it's interesting that he says, watch to see what he will say, not wait to hear what he will say, but watch to see what he will say unto me. It seems he, he had experience in that God can give a vision or a visual understanding that because we are visual people and learn visually, and not only uh, auditorily, but visually, uh, that he was looking for information that would uh, instruct him in whatever situation he found himself here. And this is what uh, he saw and heard. Second verse, and the Lord answered me. Okay, answered me. So he was presenting to the Lord questions. At least one. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. In other words, there was a vision, there was a plan, and, and, and the Lord said, write it out. And I ask you, dear brothers and sisters, do you have a vision? Do you have a dream? I mean, I speak to my fellow ministers, and being 78 years of age now, possibly I can speak with uh, some experience under my belt. When you preach, why do you preach? What do you preach? What is your aim? What is your goal in your sermon or sermons? Now, when an evangelist comes to town, uh, we would think that his sermons are directed towards unbelievers coming to receive Christ. Or, or something of that nature. And uh, here, uh, he's saying, do you have a vision? Then write it down. What are you preaching? If people were in your congregation for three years, your series of sermons would lead to some destination. Would you like them to be more active in the church? Would you like them to be more prayerful? Would you like to help them to become more sensitive to the leadings and promptings of the Holy Spirit? Would you like them to be more effective in the ministry? Would you like to help them to identify their calling in God? In other words, when you preach, do you preach like a shotgun? You just spray it out in every direction? 
Or do you preach with a destination in mind? A sermon seldom will do that, but a series of sermons uh, may do that, or a retreat or something like that. Uh, I understand that a good carpenter will hit the nail, the same nail with the same hammer, a number of times until he locks it in. Lock it in. And so here he says, write the vision and make it plain uh, upon tables. <clears throat> I've, I've heard, uh, I, I, I don't mean to be critical, but because of my um, ability to comprehend and understand. When I was in college and we were in English courses, they asked us to read a, 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 read a short story and then sh we were asked, well, what did this mean and what did that mean? And somebody would say something, well, the table represents the parents and the chairs represent the children. And somebody else would say, well, the table rather re represents the sun and the chairs represent uh, the uh, planets around the sun. And you know, it was too um, uh, cloudy uh, for me to comprehend how both interpretation could be, could be right. My degree is in physics and mathematics. Two plus two equals four. Not, well, I feel that two plus two should be higher values of four. Nonsense. Anyway, uh, make it clear. What are you saying? What, what is your vision? Can you write it down? Uh, do you have a vision but you can't identify it? Well, get busy and focus in on it and identify it. How can you take steps towards your vision when your vision is obfuscated or cloudy or, or something like that? So make a point that he may run that readeth it. In other words, make it like a t-shirt logo. You know, somebody just take a look at it, they got it, they understand it. And then he goes on in the third verse and he says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Your vision, my vision, what God has revealed to us, there's, there's timing involved. And of course, we in our culture, you know, ancient, uh, in here in Romania, they have some nice frozen packaged meals, uh, very good uh, and um, wholesome, I hope. And, uh, you know, I can put that in my little electric oven and in 35 minutes I've got a nice uh, meal that'll tide me over to my real meal. Uh, but we, we like things right away. But here, the vision is for an appointed time. You know, dear saints, with, with all the turmoil in the world today, uh, even in the churches, for instance, here in Romania, we're not able to do any camps or conferences. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't do ministry. And ministry is happening every day with the interaction with different people and, uh, and so on. I mean, uh, uh, so don't let this shut you down. You can take steps towards the fulfillment of your vision. So it, it is for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak. In other words, the, 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 don't despair because you don't see it happening as rapidly as, as you would like. Uh, when the Holy Spirit came in and said, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Or with Joshua, it says, in, in the moment that they began to sing and praise, in that moment, something was unlocked, or Paul and Silas in prison, and suddenly there was, so God can do a, what we think will take, require years, 
very rapidly. But in the end, Habakkuk reminds us, it shall speak and not lie. In other words, your, your faith, your prayers, your patience and everything like that is not in vain. It will surely, uh, in the end, it will speak. Though it tarry, <laughs> oh, remember those tarrying meetings. Tarrying meetings. Um, I go back some years and we had tarrying meetings. And what were those? Those were waiting upon the Lord, calling upon the Lord, interceding before the Lord, um, making our requests known unto the Lord, worshiping the Lord, thanking Him in advance of seeing or hearing or feeling anything but um, for for the vision yet it don't, it, though it tarry wait for it yes hallelujah I remember waiting for it and in an unexpected moment that for which I was seeking was fulfilled and uh, because it will surely come, and then it will not tarry. When it, when it begins to happen, nothing can stop it. Nothing can stop it. And then he, he closes this section of four verses uh, by saying, Behold, or pay attention to this, his soul which is lifted up is not upright within him. In other words, pride uh, is, is uh, this is not the way to go. But the just shall live by his faith. Hold on, brother. Stand on the word, my sister. Um, hold in there. Hang in there. Be faithful. Be strong. Quit you like men, um, and and uh, the just shall live that way by continuing to believe God. And when one thing is fulfilled, you can be sure that there will be something beyond that that will require your faith and incorporate all the lessons you've learned from um, standing upon your watch, getting into your tower, wherever that may be, and see what the Lord will say. And um, though it tarry, at the end it will speak, for it's an appointed time, and it's worth waiting for a thousand times over, it's waiting for. Thank you for listening. And I pray this is an encouragement to you, my brothers and sisters, because we're doing the same thing here in Romania. We're waiting on God. We're waiting for his moment. But we're doing everything that we can to prepare for when that moment comes, we will not be lacking. My name is Roy. I'm your friend. And thank you for listening. And uh, it's been a while, but I'm back, and I'll see you soon again. God bless you. Goodbye.